So hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to The Sound of Drop, Fall into Poison. So just before we kick off the continuing the story from where we left off in the last episode, um, we're first of all just going to backtrack, um, just because we kind of came to uh, the last red decision where we actually made the correct decision first off. So uh, for once it happened, I made the right decision first off. But um, I've decided, uh, let's go back and see what the choosing the, the wrong decision would have led to. What what bad end awaits my Yumi at this point? So we're just back at the time when the this girl with the purple hair has uh, come in to the souvenir shop to kind of rescue us from the room that is, um, well, was covered in toads, poisonous and venomous toads and frogs that were kind of leaking poison out of each other's dead carcasses and causing more venom to fall on the floor which would uh, melt potentially Mayumi down to her bones apparently with her um, exposed sandals um, but this, at this point the girl, uh, this girl had come in she used the fire extinguisher to set off the water sprinklers and that is kind of neutralizing the, the water running is kind of uh, neutralizing the poison but there are still more frogs falling from the from the roofing and uh, more poison obviously being done as well as war. So uh, Mayumi doesn't have a lot of time to escape from the souvenir shop and go with the girl. So last time we chose to run straight through, which was the correct option in fact to survive. So let's find out what happens when we say we'll go around the frogs and the water by you climbing the furniture I guess in the room. So at that moment I falter and go around. I can. It's no laughing, laughing matter if I fall, so I'll go that way. And then the girl, the girl is not happy with your decision. Do you doubt me? Huh? You get that you don't have time for that, right? Oh, and she is deadly serious. She's got even the dead, the angry dead fish eyes. Oh, wow. She legit just shot us back in. She's obviously pissed that we didn't agree with her decision. Um, and she's shut us in, I think. The girl speaks in a cold voice and closes the door. As if recognizing my suddenly slowed heartbeat, the rain stops. The sprinklers have been turned off. What? Just her freaking luck. The sprinklers turn off and she closes the door again. So now Mayumi is shut in this room again. There is no water now to neutralize the venom. So she's gonna end meet a bad end I think no words will come out even as I come to understand my circumstances I cannot say anything croak 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 Ooh -ah, ooh -ah, ooh -ah. yep the venomous frogs poison frogs are getting close to her and even though some of the water's poison's been washed away by water, it's not going to be effective. Key, key, key. The frog's cannon continues as they hop freely about. They spray liquid all over. Yeah, they've got like they said they've got like warts and pores on their bodies that just, you know, can shoot poison out. Ah! Frightened, I kick the bright red frog at my feet into the air. He is crushed with a splat, his venom wetting the tips of my toes. And well, now Mayumi, I think you're screwed. Ha! Yep. I scream this word reflexively. Actually, ouch would probably fit better than hot. Shaking, I look down at my feet. My right big toenail is slowly melting away. Oh, now she's starting to melt. Ah! Spray from raising my foot so high scatters about, so that'll be combination of water and further venom. Some of it getting in my left eye. No! My vision fades in sync with the intense pain. So now she's blinded herself with the venom. Croak, croak, croak. Ooh ah, ooh ah, ooh ah. Key, key, key. 
the stench of acid grows stronger once more. So now her vision has been affected. She is partially blind. I have to get to the door. Enduring the pain, I take a step. I crush several frogs. Leaving the sensation of slippery meat, the fluids that scatter about strike me around the knees. She's going to get melted even further. As I take my second step, I lose my balance. She's done. I can't balance on the leg that has melted. But it doesn't hurt. Why? Probably because you're either already dead or they maybe have numbing agents in the poison. I quickly get my answer. My nerves have already been paralyzed. As long as I can't feel the pain, at least not the intense pain of my flesh melting. <laughs> Now she's gone mad. I laugh, naturally. Even though my body has begun to deteriorate, I feel no agonizing pain. <laughs> ah, how strange. In my fading consciousness, I keep thinking that I should at least try to laugh. So guys, death by melting from venom. And the madness that follows indecision. And so she went mad with not feeling the pain, but obviously knowing her fate of melting into nothingness. And you died again, Mayumi. But we knew that was coming because we'd obviously made the better decision the last time. So anyway, that was just to see that bad end because we obviously want to get all the bad ends as well as the good ends. Um, so... Let us get back to where we originally left the last episode. And so here we go. We're back in this uh, slightly fucked up um, part of the game. Uh, we're back in the Jellyfish Aquarium. This section called Crimson Fear. Sounds appropriate. Uh, but yeah, so we ended up... Um, just a quick recap from the last episode. So... Obviously you saw what the bad decision did with that girl in the souvenir shop, but we obviously chose to run through the water when it was neutralizing the poison. Then the, the girl stepped in to save us and pull us out of the souvenir shop. So we survived. Um, we also had a few other bad ends from previous decisions, um, but we kind of got ourselves out of the souvenir shop. Um, what other things happened in the last episode? I'm having, I'm having to actually think about it. Uh, um, so we uh, went to, we we ended up at Manton Aquarium's gate entrance. Um, we tried to see if um, we could escape from the area first of all by choosing to throw a bucket through the entranceway or roll a, a bucket through the entranceway which showed that it actually disappeared when it reached the center of the exit so it kind of sent showed an kind of invisible portal or void into leaving the malicious time paradox mountain aquarium to go back out to the normal world back out to the present day world um, which at one point we chose a bad end which was to actually leave Manton Aquarium or try going through the gate with our body so she could get to the elevator and so st test whether they could escape that way and she would go back for her menu. but it actually turned out that Mayumi couldn't go back to the malicious messed up Manton Aquarium um, so she ended up uh, being stuck back outside in the real world and having to tell the police as well as Jimeno's parents that her Jimeno was missing and never she was never found and also the phenomenon of changing rooms and uh, rooms suddenly becoming filled with fish and water and drowning in a room with no water the phenomenon followed Mayumi out to the real world and she eventually died in a hospital um, she was probably being treated there for potential insanity because they didn't believe her story is, is what one of my theories was anyway. So we then chose to not go there, not leave at that point, um, which was then when we bumped into uh, this um, girl 
Uh, I just keep calling her the girl with the purple hair because I honestly can't remember her name. Um, so we met her. Uh, we also, and then we obviously we got out of that situation with the toads and the frogs um, outside the souvenir shop. But we also at that point saw that the the mountain aquarium had kind of changed again. It kind of looked like the souvenir shop from the past when Mari and Mayumi went there five years ago because the gacha gacha machine showed the key change that they previously had um, which prompted Mayumi to remove her take her keychain back out and tell the story about the to this girl with the purple hair about her little sister Mari disappearing five years ago and with that she pulled the keychain out and what was really strange and messed up was that there was a photo attached of the young girl with purple hair as a child with what we believe is her father and we learned that her father was murdered, possibly in Manton Aquarium. And it kind of suggests that the purpose of the girl being in this, wanting to stay in Manton Aquarium, this malicious one, is to find out what happened to her dad. And she's even willing to die to find out the truth. So that's kind of messed up, as you can see. Um, so we kind of learned that. And then. Um, what else happened after that? Um, so, she, Mayumi suggested that this young girl with the purple hair kind of looks like her little sister Mari. So, but she didn't seem to put the pieces together, whereas we, as the viewers, could. Um, so, at that point, then the, the girl kind of realized that these two were in this area for similar reasons, trying to find loved ones that had disappeared here, or even been murdered here, apparently. Um, and, but again, the girl with the purple hair was insistent on not working with Mayumi, not being together with Mayumi, and not being friends. And she took off, um, leaving Mayumi behind, um, where Mayumi has decided to continue with her plan, which was to try and get to the Deep Sea Fish World booth, and also maybe check out the director's office, but in order to get there, she had to return to one of the places where she's died a few times. Uh, the jellyfish booth, which had the different coloured jellyfish tanks. Um, but we have returned to there now. We opened the door, closed it behind us, and we're greeted with this. Where it appears all the jellyfish tanks are kind of blood red colour. Uh, there was a red tank before, but there were different colours before as well. And the jellyfish... Uh, do not look so good. So, um, a bit prolo bit of a long explanation there, but um, we did cover a lot in the last episode. So, let's get going. What is this? It's different. Well, yes, on inspection, it definitely is. The field of view before me becomes red, and the air becomes so cold it could freeze. Oh yeah, and speaking of the air in this room, I keep forgetting there's a large rotate. There was a large rotating fan the last time. This is no longer a matter of dimensions. Of wondering what time period this is. Something is different. This jellyfish booth is distinctly in a different place from the aquarium. Oh. All right, so you're supposed to be in the same location, but it's different. Hmm. All the water in the tanks. It's red. In the jellyfish booth, I know, the transparent jellyfish are illuminated by various colours of lighting. The reds and purples are usually a pretty sight, but this place is different. All of the pillar-shaped tanks are bright red. It's a repulsive sight, as if all of the water has been replaced with blood. Oh, wow, and Mayumi's actually going up towards the tanks. I have to go. A bit confused, I take a step forward. Despite the fact that the floor at my feet should be solid, I stagger. My sense of equilibrium is off. Uh-oh. The last time um, Mayumi's sense of equilibrium and balance was off was when she was affected by the Orca's um, ultrasonic waves when we chose bad endings. Oh, she's moving further into the room. She's getting closer to the door on the other side, though. I proceed one, then two steps. At that point, I start to feel like I might fall. Even so, I head further inside. 
If I can pass through another door, I should be able to escape this bizarre phenomena. No matter what, I have to hurry. Ah! Oh, God. What is it? Suddenly, I stumble and place my hand on a pillar tank. The temperature of the tank is slightly warmer than that of the cold air. Okay. Oh, God. Close-up view of a tank with... It does appear to be air bubbles in there, but that looks... I don't think it's water. I think, legitimately, it is blood. Huh? Just as I am about to move forward using the tank to support myself, I peer into the red water. Where there should be jellyfish floating about, there is something completely different. Oh, no. We're not going to find a corpse in there, are we? Oh, my God! <laughs> oh, my shit! Oh, my God! Wow! Holy shit. There is a severed head in the tank with red eyes and mouth gaping open, so, uh, Jesus. And with very stringy black hair. Holy crap. I was not expecting that, that scared me a little. N no! I'm unable to stop the scream that bursts from my mouth. An unbelievable sight stops me in my tracks. A face! A face! Yeah! Human faces float about. This kind of confirms one of the urban legends and rumours. Whatever is below the neck appears as if it's been assimilated into the blood, blending in with the contents of the tank. It isn't just one of them. Just as with the previous jellyfish booth, there are more and more and more- Oh god, so there's more than one head in the tank. I wobble and break away from the tank, landing on my backside. I don't know whose face it is. It's not as if it would be someone I know. Oh god, I hope that you don't suddenly see another face. But no matter which face it is, they all seem to be staring at me, here in the heart of the jellyfish booth. Taking a step back, I see that all of the tanks have human faces floating inside them. They have some differences, such as some faces being blank, some have their eyes bulging open, and some have bloodshot eyes, but they are all looking at me. What is this? That face over there's nose is twitching. Oh jeez, you can actually see it. The movement twitching. The f this face's lips are trembling and way over there, that one has a crease in its brow. Badadum, my heart beats faster. Babum, babum, babum. In rhythm with my heartbeat, I experience a hallucination that the faces in the tanks are drawing closer. Oh, what the fuck? Oh god, is, is this... Is this going to zoom in? No, this is... <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Don't let the severed human heads be talking in the tanks. What? Wait, what? What the hell? Oh god, I have no idea what's going on now. <laughs> oh my god, all the ta all the heads in the tank are laughing. No. It isn't a hallucination. I am certain that all of these faces are getting closer to me. The fact that they are getting larger serves as proof. The boundary between the tanks and the air is gradually being removed. The room is becoming all water. Oh no. Blood red water. The faces are swimming in that water, drawing closer to me. As the faces draw closer, the sound within the water grows louder. Rather than someone's laughing voice, it is the sound of someone sobbing that grows louder instead. Either way it is the same to me, wearing away at my mental state. <laughs> oh god. 
Stop it! <laughs> a voice unfamiliar to me is sneering at me. Little by little, these unfamiliar faces are closing in on me. Before I realize it, my feet can no longer confirm whether the floor is there or not. Oh god. Whoa, that is a messed up visual. I have to go. So I put all my strength into my knees. I've already learned that time is of the essence. I have to take some sort of action. Should I use force? Should I steady myself to move easier? If distance is the issue, then the way I came is just a bit closer. I... This is a very extremely similar scenario to the last time we were in the jellyfish booth area. We go back or we move on. Um, so... Okay, uh, also the... Now we've already read that. I was just wondering if it was different because this area has now become quite messed up. So, um, I mean, we've seen that going back in this game usually leads to a bad end. So, just to see what happens, I think we'll go back first. She did say that the door going back the way is a bit closer, so maybe it's the better option this time. I go back. At any rate, I should pull back and get into a good position. Excuse me. I should open and close the door numerous times in order to create a safer environment. Alright, yeah, that's a good... Maybe that would be a good idea. It's kind of cheating the system, uh, but maybe it'll work. My feet unsteady, I swiftly dodge and retrace my steps. One step at a time, feeling as if I'm walking on bubbles, I inch with certainty closer to the door. Alright. Finally, I succeed in reaching for the door. Just like this. I throw open the door right away. Huh? At that moment, I am swallowed up in darkness. I think this is exactly what happened. This room is going to be full of water, isn't it? Whether it's darkness or water, at any rate, there is definitely no light. Plop. Something touches my back with a wet sensation. Before long, it spreads throughout my body. And we're back in the deep ocean. What? Without thinking, I spin around. Before me are a large number of fish. They say that fish with human faces swim about. Oh no, so these are actually, these human faces are the fish. Oh no. I'm reminded of Jimeno's words. That's right, human faced fish. So there's one of the other theories or legends confirmed in this messed up place. Just like the faces I saw at the jellyfish booth, these are attached to the fish approaching me. I'm an idiot. If I go through the door, the time axis will change. If I do that, the way I came also changes. I have no idea whether or not it will be safe. Regardless, to avoid the immediate terror, I vigorously leap forward. The fish are biting off my clothes. There. Fish. Yes, fish. No matter how much their white teeth are like humans, and no matter how much their teeth are arranged like humans, they're all fish. So, it'll be fine. Before I realize it, the clothes enveloping me are disappearing. Blood leaks from the places I have been bitten by those large teeth. Look, red water. The blood thrown from my body mixes with the red ocean, and then they become one. Me and this bright red world. Yeah, I had a feeling that would be a bad end, but I thought we'd better check it out anyway. A coward's end. Oh, achievement unlocked yellow, so I think that is... Uh, like... 50% of the bad ends. So going back, we bailed out, so the coward's end. Oh well, bad end, guys. 
Well, I had a feeling we would have to press forward, but I just wanted to see if we got a different ending. Um, just also because of these achievements I'm mentioning, I'm not sure if they appear on the screen while I'm recording, but uh, just to show you this. So with this, there are f with this game, there are four true ends, um, and so it may require playing the game th through more than once. But um, I'll work out how I might record that because I want to show all the true ends as well as the bad ends. And as you can see, we have got quite a lot of the bad ends so far. Uh, not all of them, though. I was wondering if they appear in order, but they they don't. So anyway, let's get back to where we were and continue. So. The better decision to make in this scenario is for us to move on. My resolution can no longer be shaken. Even if I go back, I don't know if it will be safe. In that case, I'll have to choose the way with even a small chance. Unable to tell whether I am floating or standing, I frantically move my arms and legs. The faces are closing in, but even as I look up, I'm not afraid. Persuading myself, I move forward a bit. Even if there's no feeling left in my legs, I get the feeling that I actually am drawing closer to the door. Yes you are, You're, we're zooming in on it, you're getting closer. Just a little more. Oh no. Again, the frickin' tanks are cracking. Suddenly, a loud sound interrupts my movements. That sound is familiar to me. It's a sound I've heard in this jellyfish booth before. The sound of the glass breaking resonates from behind me. Still, I won't give up. I refuse to turn around. If I were to see something bad right now, this time my heart may really break. In that case, it may be better for me not to know. Hee <laughs> hee. Oh no way. Hi hi. Hi hi hi. Hi 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 hi. Hi 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 hi. Oh, come on Mayumi, they just want to say hello. On the heels of that thought, Various voices, all laughing and crying, begin to resonate behind me. They are probably the voices of those faces floating in the blood. Yeah, that would be logical. The voices steadily draw near, finally closing in on me. Fish with human faces. They say that fish with human faces swim about. It reminds me of an urban legend Himeno talked about. However, I don't have the time to be in shock over a rumour being true. I won't falter. Human faces and shards of glass are passing by the edge of my field of vision. Occasionally they touch my cheek or forehead, but I move forward. I drift as I move along, grabbing the door with a clack. I encourage myself out loud so I don't lose focus. I have no idea what lies ahead. Gah. Almost at the same time as I pull on the door, I begin to feel heavy pressure against my back. It's heavy. Why? I can guess what has happened. Surely the fish are stopping me from moving on. This feeling of having my clothes pulled on is proof of that. I never thought fish could be this strong. I'm going. I'm going. So... I bite down on my lip and try to move forward. The harder I try to move forward, the stronger the fish's resistance becomes. Himeno is suffering even more. I shut my eyes and grind my back molars, then hurl myself at the door. The door flies open and I fall to the ground. Even so, I muster up my strength and shut the door. There is no longer any pressure against my back. Well, you've certainly closed off that area at least. But where have you ended up? Huh? And that gives me an indication that we're still not safe, guys. Beyond the door is not the Fish of the World booth. It's dark and narrow, similar to the staff passageway I passed through before. Turning about and looking around, I realise that this is a passageway after all. Oh no. Are we going to be saying hello to Kenji again? So the jellyfish booth had at least three doors. The one I initially came in through, the one that leads to the entrance, and this door that connects to the staff-only passage. Shit. This has got Kenji written all over it. A closer inspection shows me that the wall is made of one-way glass. It's been created using something stronger than acrylic fibre. There's water in the space between, serving as a border between the booth and the other side. Like a magic mirror, 
it's been made so that customers cannot see the staff members moving about. All right, okay. All right, so the staff members can move freely from one area to another without distracting the customers from seeing the, the exhibits, the fish. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, we definitely haven't been here before, or maybe we did at the beginning. From here, I can see the fish at the world booth. Somehow, this place feels safer when compared to the jellyfish booth. Well, it certainly looks nice at the moment. Nothing messed up going on so far. It's very different from the first time I visited, with the offensive smell being completely gone. Inside, I can see familiar silhouettes. Oh, is this also the area where she first discovered dead fish in, in the one of the walkways? Hmm. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no, the girl with the purple hair, as well as the bitchy director. Uh, Sagi Numa Reiko. That's two females. One is an adult, the other is a girl. The visibility is a bit dicey, making it hard to tell, but that looks like the girl from earlier, and... Sagi Numa Reiko-san. The female aquarium employee... The heartless one, who said Jimeno couldn't be saved. The two of them are in front of the tank I am looking at. The fact that they haven't realised them there must mean this really is something of a one-way mirror. Both of them are facing each other, their expressions grim. Oh, right, so from that description, Mayumi's on the other side of the tank, so they can't see Mayumi, but they're together with each other. Uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Probably not. The sound is cut off by all of the layers, but I can tell they are arguing over something. Oh shoot! The girl just, I think, just struck Reiko. Ah! At that moment, the girl raises her right hand to Saginuma-san and follows through with all of her might. She slaps her with such vigor that it surely resonates with a loud, dry, smacking sound. Ouch! That sounds painful. Uh, well... The the girl here with the purple hair. Um, I, I, I really have to learn her name. I'll put it in edits, probably. Uh, but she said her father was murdered. And I guess it happened at Manton Aquarium. Or she knows that Manton Aquarium had something to do with the murder. So the fact that she's found an employee. Um, and particularly someone high up. She'll not be happy, I guess. Saganuma-san rubs her left cheek and grins wildly. Oh no, there's that evil, gl that evil grin. Oh, I have a bad feeling about this, guys. Seeing Saganuma-san grin with such composure after being struck gives me chills. The girl only deepens the crease in her brow. Oh, wow, okay. At this rate, things will only intensify. I realise that we'll have to stop them. Okay, well, okay, maybe I got that wrong. Maybe Mayumi is on the same side of the glass tank as them. But, um, okay, so it is blue choices, so it'll lead towards one of the true endings, or at least this decision will not cause a bad end. Uh, well, let's save anyway. And also, the fish of the world booth, freshwater fish of Southeast Asia. Uh, we've read that. I've just I see a few lines and I, I recognize them, so we have read that before. Okay, okay. Uh, right. I've made a. Ch well, we need to make a choice here. So, the story will continue regardless of which one we choose. So, obviously, our young friend, the girl, is clearly pissed off with Reiko, but we also know that Reiko is a cold heart bitch, and also she wants to use Himeno as a sample because she's dying from parasitic nematodes uh, so I dare to think what this Reiko director might have in store for this girl if well what she's been provoked um, so I'm not sure I could try and stop her or observe the situation um, I, real I realise that I will have to stop them so <sighs> With Mayumi saying that, I kind of think we should choose to stop her. 
but I'm not sure whether we're trying to stop Reiko from hurting the girl or whether we're trying to stop the girl from, you know, pissing off Reiko more. Observing the situation seems a bit not mean because uh, something bad may happen. So we may, I don't know, we may regret this, but we'll say we'll stop her. I attempt to leave my safe place, but I cannot find a break in the wall. All oh, right, okay, so we did try and stop her. So I was right that Mayumi is on the other side of the walls, so there's no way for her to get through. Shit. So all we can do is watch by the looks of things. There should be a door somewhere. Even as I think this, I cannot find a doorknob in the darkness. As I keep my eyes on the both of them, I decide to search the area connected to the Fish of the World booth. Uh-oh. The girl's getting more and more pissed off. Looks as if she's also in shock, possibly from the way her eyes are kind of bulging. Their quarrel continues, the girl using hand gestures to get Saginuma-san's attention. In contrast, she merely looks down on the girl. From my perspective as an outsider, it doesn't look like she's even paying attention. She's not interested. All she's interested in is, you know, do, carrying out her work and uh, not anyone getting in her way and for her to get her what appear to be samples for... She, I, I don't know what she specifically does. She's an, an assistant to the directors or associate to the directors, but I'm assuming she has a science background. What could have happened? Good question. What in the world could have happened to bring them to such a climax? Though I have many questions, it's unlikely that I'll get any answers. Uh-oh. She, she's kind of backing down, so she's, she's kind of in a shocked state, but not saying anything. A sad expression appears on the girl's face for a moment. Then she looks away from Saginuma-san. Oh my god. That is creepy. Yeah, Reiko Saginuma definitely has bad intentions. She looks as if she's going to hurt this girl. At almost the same time, the composure leaves Saginuma-san's face. She creases her brow and opens her eyes wide. Her nose is twitching. You've triggered her. Something has touched her nerve getting her attention, even without sound. That much is clear to me. Uh-oh. Oh, shit, she struck her. Huh? W wait! Without thinking about it, I pound on the wall. However, this doesn't so cause so much as a ripple, leaving me cut off from the two of them. This time, Saginuma-san hits the girl. Then she immediately grabs the nape of the girl's neck, and throws her into the wall of the tank. There is no sign of the impact. Oh my god. Wow. She hit her the tank. She hit her against her head against the tank with so much force. Um it's not confirmed, but I think the girl's dead. No, no! Having hit the back of her head on the tank, the girl falters and Saginuma-san flips her body over, grabbing the back of her collar. The girl's face is turned in my direction and I realise that she has fainted. She's fainted. Uh, mm, her eyes are open and there's blood coming out of her eyes. It doesn't look good. She's unconscious. A horrible premonition runs through me. With the girl's chest pressed against the wall of the tank, Saganuma-san grabs the back of her head and smashes it against the tank wall over and over again. I can't see Saganuma's face as it is bathed in light from behind and has become a silhouette. The only thing I can see is her lips, which dangle in the shape of an anchor. No, at this rate she'll die! Without thinking, I scream. I have to help her. I can't stay quiet any longer. At any rate, I pound on the wall before me. Come on, come on, please, let it get through. However, no matter how many times I strike it, Saganuma-san does not look this way, as if the sound isn't going through. Since the sound from the other side isn't coming through, then the sound from my side shouldn't go through either. 
It figures. I have no choice but to go out there. I grope about, trying to find a crack in either side of the wall. From top to bottom, right to left, I go along the outer side of the tank and look to see if there's a way to get in from below. A handle of some sort would be great, or anything that could serve as a starting point. There's nothing. Nothing. I still can't find any way whatsoever to get to the other side. Panicking over what I should do, I frantically search for the door. I think you're going to be too late, Mayumi. During that moment, the girl continues to have her forehead bashed against the tank right in front of my eyes. A gash is torn wide across her forehead, her blood clinging to the tank with each hit. The blood sticking to the tank makes a red line as if someone tried to wipe a brush across it. Oh, Jesus. This is brutal. That one line of blood quickly becomes two, then the two merge into one large flow of blood. No! No! Her eyes are white and wide open, the blood from the girl's forehead making them seem bright red. I think she's done. From those eyes, I can sense no signs of life. Saganuma Reiko's lips are, of course, smiling. Stop this! Unable to stand anymore, I scream. However, it is pointless, merely echoing back through the passageway I'm in. Stop! This already! No movement is left in the girl, save for the shaking of her eyeballs. Not just blood from her forehead, but as her entire body goes limp, fluids from all over leak out. Huh? As the life... As the life fades from the girl, I see a small movement from her lips. I mimic that movement with my own mouth. Oh, oh she's trying... Wait a minute, can the girl... The girl thinks she... No, Mayumi's there? So she's mur she's murmuring something to Mayumi while she dies. The truth of the deep sea. As these words are unvoiced, I have no idea whether or not that's what she really said. However, to me, that's what it seemed like the girl was saying. Saginuma Reiko tosses the girl. She flops over as she hits the floor, having been reduced to a mere object. Ah. My mind goes blank, and I sit down. I couldn't save her. She was right in front of me, at a distance short enough that I could have touched her by reaching out my hand, but I couldn't save her or do anything to help. Just in case, Saganuma Rego kicks the girl over, her heel strikes the hard floor, and that which was the girl's head flops over. Fuck! Just like that, she leaves the Fish of the World booth behind. Whoa. At that moment, I see bright red. Without a moment's pause, the girl's corpse loses all traces of life. It decomposes and goes beyond that to completely dried out. What? It decomposes and goes dried out immediately. What the hell? Some new phenomenon is starting, but I can't stand up as I am right now. Ah. Ah. I'm powerless. Oh, what the heck? I can't do anything. Something hot wells up behind my eyes. No. Oh. I don't want this. I don't... I don't want Jimeno to die like this. But... But... The image of that girl's expression as she was on the verge of death is scorched into my mind. So hollow, yet so desperate, her face burning up with rage, that face keeps appearing within my bright red vision. The deep sea, the truth. Just before the flame of life was extinguished, I think those were the words the girl left me. So the truth of all this malicious mountain aquarium, all the part you know this messed up mountain aquarium with time paradoxes and things the truth to finding out what the heck is going on is at the deep sea fish booth apparently then what 
I don't want to just sit here brooding like this. Big sister. Oh, Mari, now is not the time. Now is not the time for mind games. Huh? That voice just now. Even though it feels easier just to break down and cry, hearing the voice of my little sister from somewhere brings me back. That was Mari's voice. Oh, nay, Chan, or big sister, come this way. Mari, where are you? This way, over here. Where? Where? I said this way, over here. It is Mari, Mari's voice. It really is, but from where? Before I realize it, I'm on my feet. Mari's voice echoes about the room like an announcement from a loudspeaker, but I can't find the source. I don't want to lose sight of this one strand of hope that has filled the hole left by my feelings of anxiety. Let's go. I cannot forget that girl's death. Stricken with grief and near the breaking point, I hold myself together. Thanks to Mari. Ooh, running. Now I'm not sure where we are. Um, it doesn't look as if it's somewhere we've been before, guys. I'm not sure. This is... Recklessly coming out of the passageway, I end up right where the tunnel tank lets out. Oh, oh right, so we're just at the end of the tunnel tank. Uh, okay. Um, I, I had to do a voice for Mari earlier in the game. I'm trying to remember what it was. Big sister! Oh my. Mantem Aquarium Penguin. Oh yeah, there's a pe I think that was a pe let, let me... Hold on. Sorry, guys. Oh no, that's that doesn't look like a penguin. Hmm. But we're at Mantem Aquarium Penguin, the cute tottering. Speaking of popular attractions at the aquarium, yes, the penguins are one of them. Did you all know that long ago penguins flew like many other birds? As they are now, it's hard to imagine, right? Yeah, that is true. Um, okay. So. Apparently Mari is talking to us. Ah! Big sister, this way! Ma- Mari? Is that you? I slowly turn in the, the direction the voice is coming from. Exiting the tunnel tank, I can see a wide wall before me. In front of it stands a girl. Wearing winter clothes. Wow. Okay. If if the if this is if this is real, if it's not a ghost, then Mayumi may have found her little sister Mari in Manson Aquarium after five years. Wow. But I think we'll leave that reunion for the next episode, guys. Uh, gonna leave it here on a wee bit of a cliffhanger. And man, uh, I think we need to take a break. Jeez, that that was so messed up, that episode. I mean, wow. The the jellyfish booth for a start, and then also... The Reiko murdering the girl with the purple hair. That was so messed up. A bit sad, actually. So, um, yeah, well, we'll continue with the story next time, guys, and see... Uh, if Mayumi is about to get reunited with her little sister and also do we get out of here do we save a meno? More, more questions need to be answered guys so let's continue next time so thank you very much guys for watching this video and um, if you enjoyed it please give it a massive big thumbs up it really helps me out and um, also don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content um, including the continuation of this game as well as more to follow and um, if you've got anything you want to ask me or any other comments you want to say just leave them below um, and also yeah so we'll continue the story next time and thank you very much for watching guys and i'll see you in the next video bye